we are going through our studies of uh, the names of God. This is week seven. Um, as Angelo knows, there's like a, over a couple hundred names, and I don't know where, how far, how. I keep thinking that we're going to be done here, but the more I study, the more I'm finding more and more stuff that I would love to share with you guys. So, um, so tonight we're going to be doing Jehovah Shalom, and I know that uh, everyone knows the name of God of being the Lord is peace. But when it comes from the story that it comes from in the Bible, it, it takes a different uh, turn. And so we all think about peace as like, oh, so nice and peaceful. But this is going to show, it's going to be a different side of it. So um, it's kind of an interesting study. Um, so with this being said, we're going to start and open it up in a Hi, word Jess. of prayer. Wow, that was good. Hi, <laughs> that was Jesse walking in. I yeah. you. All right, you want to stop saying on that and open up some prayer? All right, Father God, we come before you tonight, my God. Yes, thank you. Lord, we thank you, my God, Lord, for who you are, Lord. And we just want to praise you tonight, my God. Lord, we just want to give you some praise, my God. Lord, we thank you, my God. We praise you. We worship you, my God. There's not enough praise that we can give you for what you've done for us, my God. So, Lord, we ask, my God, Lord, tonight, Father, that you would just enter in, Lord. You are welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. You are free to enter in. And I pray, Father, that you just anoint every heart tonight. Lord, that as Eric speaks, I pray that it's not him but you, my God. And I just ask for every distraction to be canceled out in Jesus' name. Amen. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wait one second. I'm going to use it. Jessica wants my cards already. All right, so before we start, I just wanted to give a little testimony real quick. Uh, this job that we did today, me and Mikey, um, it was kind of a tricky one. You know, a lot of different pulls and a lot of all this stuff, and it's water drainage and all this stuff. I was really nervous. And I wasn't nervous. Mikey wasn't nervous, and I said, man, I'm a little nervous this morning. And Mikey's like, don't worry about it, bro. He's like, Jehovah Job Fixer. He's got it. Amen. And the job come out perfect. perfect. I mean, it really did. We used a lot more blacktop than we figured, but... That's all right, because we put it down right, and it's it's all nice and flat. Water runs perfect. It's just, uh, so I just wanted to give a testimony to God, just to give uh, give credit to where credit's due. He is our Jehovah Job Fixer. You know, even when we don't know who to trust, we can always trust in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, so tonight our name is Jehovah Shalom, okay? That's Melody. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom. Miss Shalom. Now, Jehovah Shalom is only used one time in Scripture, and it's a branch off of the word Shalem, and this word means to be complete or sound, if anybody can see, I'm looking at the camera, and, it, and uh, to be complete or sound, and Shalom simply means peace, of course, but it also means absence from strife. Free from strife. Yes, yeah, so free from strife, Abs absence from strife. Wow. So Shalom. in order to have peace, there has to be no strife. Dang, okay? Thank you, Lord. Amen to that. So we're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to learn a little bit about Jehovah Shalom. Now, I do know that there's one student in particular that happens to love the story of Gideon. I ain't going to say no names, but everybody knows who she is. Amber. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be fun because Amber's going to be like, I already know all this stuff. But... Um, I, I know God's going to give us some revelation because as I studied, I, I pulled some more stuff out of there. Well, the Lord showed some things to me that I didn't see before. So tonight's study takes us into the book of Judges, uh, chapter 6. And uh, we will start at verse 1, and then we're going to see where it goes from there. So let's turn to Judges, chapter 6. It's right after the book of Joshua. Joshua, Judges, Ruth. That's how I remembered it. Okay. Brought us to begin. Judges, Judges chapter six, yes. Six. Judges. Yes. Judges chapter six. My Bible's in a trap. Yeah. But okay, so before we get into it, I'm gonna have I'm gonna first give you a little bit of backstory, okay? <clears throat> After Joshua leads Israel into the promised land in the book of Joshua, he tells them to serve God. He tells them to make a choice. And you've heard this story before, but he says, you, if, if serving the Lord to you is right, then serve him. If not, then serve whatever you want to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Bye, Ruth. Everybody knows this, this scripture. So that's the end of Joshua after they get to the promised land. And um, he says, I'm going to serve the Lord. So Israel says, oh, we'll, we'll serve God. We're going to serve God. However, that's what they say, but they don't choose to serve God. 
at least not fully. Close to Deuteronomy. They don't serve. To, they don't choose to serve God fully, and uh, the chapters before, in chapters one, two, three, four, and five, they speak of a cycle that happens over and over with the Israelites. Okay, so here's what happens with the Israelites in the first five chapters. Since there's nobody to lead them, Mo Moses is gone. Joshua's not leading anymore. They all said that they're going to make a choice to serve Joshua, God. Joshua just judges. What they end up saying is they turn away and they worship other gods and then they get oppressed and then they repent and then deliverance comes. And then again in the next chapter, they turn away from God again and they worship other gods and then they get oppressed by some form of, uh, <coughs> form of uh, enemy. They repent and God sends them deliverance. Excuse me. Over and over again, this happens. <coughs> All through the chapters, 1 through 5 of Judges. <clears throat> this time around in chapter 6, six. I'm losing my voice. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, just help us voice my God in the name of Jesus. Yes, my God. Let it be clear and not thirsty or dry in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, guys. No. I don't know what's going on with my voice. <clears throat> for me to find the scripture. Okay. okay. Well, take, you'll give me some time. Okay. So I'm in six. Give me a second. <laughs> you get this ice down. Maybe I'll cold, cold it with cold water. <laughs> All right. So this time around in chapter six, the Israelites are dealing with some really bad dudes. And they're called the Midianites. So let's just read a little bit about what happened, uh, who the Midianites are. <clears throat> We're going to read Judges uh, chapter six, one through six. All right, so then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And in the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made for themselves uh, the dens, the caves, and the strongholds, which are in the mountains. And so it was, whenever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up. Also, Amal Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts. Both they and their camels were without number, and they would enter the land and destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. All right, so we're going to break this down just a little bit. All right, so... As this is going on, remember, the land was, they were in the promised land. And the land was given to them by God. But because they didn't serve God and didn't, didn't do what they were supposed to do, God would allow um, oppression to come their way. Okay? So verse 1. Israel did, uh, uh, Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. Uh, I want you to note this. In verse 1, it's God that brought the oppression from the Midianites. In other words, he allowed it to happen. It was in God's grace and mercy that he allowed this, for it caused them to cry out to God. All right, so I want you to get this picture here. When you're, when you're away from God, God sends something your way. Mm -hmm. It sometimes happens a lot. Amen. You know, where... Amen. You keep running away from God, yeah. and then God sends uh -huh. something bring, to bring you, you to bring your, knees. your knees. Okay, so it's in God's grace and His mercy. If He didn't do this, we would never come back to God on our own. Amen. There's there's no reason for us because our sinful nature, mm -hmm. even you know, with the Holy Spirit will pull, will pull us back. But we got to listen to the Holy Spirit, right? So, in this picture here, God allows the oppression of the Midianites. He allows it to happen so that they will get to their very end. And, and then to cry out to God, okay? Also, here's something that I didn't know until I started studying. Midian means strife in Hebrew. Mm. So we can clearly see so far that God will allow us to go through some strife when we're away from him. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to draw us back. Amen. Okay, so remember, peace means absence from strife. Mm -hmm. They're getting oppressed by the Midians, mm -hmm. and the Midianites are... Their name means strife. Remember that, okay? Because we're gonna that's, we're gonna come back to that later. Now look at uh, look at verse three, and so it was when Israel had sown, Midianites would come up, and also Amalekites, the people of the east, would come up against them. 
uh, the Midianites didn't occupy the land. Remember, this was all Jewish land. They gave, they, they won the promised land over, right? And a uh, little at a time, they didn't clear out the towns like they were supposed to. And so the Midianites didn't even actually live there. They only came up when it was time to harvest, and then they stole what the Israelites grew, okay? There's, they all